Hello everyone and welcome to Instant Biology by Dr. Nilab. The topic that we would be dealing today is Pyro Sequencing. So in the previous lectures we have also taken up the sequencing series. In the sequencing series we have already studied about Maxim Gilbert sequencing and Sanger sequencing also. But in today's lecture we would be dealing with this Pyro sequencing. So as always I have divided my lecture into the following parts and we would be dealing each part separately. So let us start. Uh, this pyro sequencing in itself is a rapid mini sequencing method. Now let us understand that why are we calling it as rapid mini sequencing uh, method. Mini sequencing because you do not need to have any agarose gel and you do not need to run your fragments on agarose gel in order to identify which base is present. Right. So in, if you uh, recall the previous lectures in which I have already explained Maxim Gilbert and uh, Sanger sequencing, if you recall, then we had to run the fragments that we had obtained in a gel electrophoresis. So after running the gel, we used to identify that which base is present in what sequence. But this is a little different. What are we doing here is this is a rapid mini sequencing method that means that it will identify by itself you do not need to run a gel primary thing is this okay now why is this called pyro sequencing now, as I have already told you that whenever you divide a biological word into two parts into its constituents into its constituents then you would automatically learn what it is saying so pyro means pyro means phosphate in P P I form that means two phosphates would be linked up together. Where do you get these pyrophosphates? We would study that in the upcoming principal portion. So pyro comes from pyrophosphate. You just need to learn here that py pyro comes from pyrophosphates. Now where are these pyrophosphates formed or why are these pyrophosphates formed? We will learn this in the principal section. Now coming to the principal section. Suppose you have a single stranded DNA. Suppose you have a single stranded DNA, right? You need to know the sequence of this DNA, right? So whenever you use a polymerase and a primer, then what will happen is the polymerase will start taking up the three prime end of the primer. This is the three prime end of the primer and the DNA polymerase will start adding the nucleotides, the new nucleotides at this three prime end. Okay, this will happen. You would already be knowing about this. So whenever a new nucleotide is added, whenever a new DNTP is added, what happens is a new DNTP when it is added, it adds up in the form of DNMP, NMP and the other two phosphates, the two phosphates, see this NTP is in this form right nucleotide uh, so sorry that uh, particular adenine thymine cytosine guanine is here and it is linked up with three phosphates okay so whenever this thing attaches to the uh, to the growing or elongating chain what happens is two phosphates are removed and a single phosphate single and a single phosphate keeps attached with this particular base okay so that is why i am saying that it attaches in the DNMP form and two phosphates get removed and those two phosphates are in the form of PPI. This is called as pyrophosphate. Okay. So this is basically what is getting removed and this PPI is the backbone. The pyrophosphate is the backbone of this pyro sequencing method. With the help of, with the help of this pyrophosphate only, we recognize which base is being added which nucleotide is being added okay so whenever this phosphodiester bond is formed between two uh, neighboring nucleotides this uh, phosphodiester bond is this phosphodiester group is released and we detect this pyrophosphate group okay so this is basically the principle behind what how pyro sequencing works after detection this is analyzed and we come to know that which base has been attached in the growing chain right now coming to the requirement portion what are the things that we require in this particular uh, sequencing technique first is 
DNA fragment which is also called as a template. Next different DNTPs would be added. Now one thing that you need to keep in mind here is that in case of ATP that means adenosine triphosphate all the others are the same. Um, be it cytosine triphosphate, guanosine triphosphate, be it anything but this ATP is different. It is called as uh, alpha thio D ATP. Alpha thio D ATP. This is different from the normal adenosine triphosphate. Why this is so? Because this D ATP or D normal D ATP is a substrate or is used in another reaction also rather than the polymerase reaction that, that we are aiming at. Okay, you would get to know more about this as we proceed in the lecture. You just need to know here that in case in place of the normal ATP, uh, you use alpha thio DTP. So this is the symbol of the alpha thio DTP, the normal DTP and alpha S is placed in front of that. Okay, the other DNTPs are the same, DCTP, DGTP, DTTP, all the others are same. Now proceeding to other requirements in this process are primer, you all know that primer would be required, DNA polymerase would be used for proceeding or for uh, adding of the nucleotides, luciferase is another enzyme that is used over here. So luciferase is used in order to convert luciferine into oxyluciferine and producing some amount of light that would be detected in order to tell that whether a particular nucleotide has been added to the growing chain or not. Okay, you would get to know about this. Luciferine we have talked about. Next is APS. So it is not ammonium persulfate. You need to remember this that APS is adenosine phosphosulfase. Adenosine phosphosulfase. This is very important. Kindly note down the actual name of APS. APS is adenosine phosphosulfase. Now what does adenosine phosphosulfase basically is responsible? So adenosine phosphosulfase is uh, basically responsible for this, uh, this, uh, this producing this complete reactions over here. We would talk about this in the upcoming portion. Now next is ATP sulfurylase. ATP sulfurylase is used over here in this reaction. We would talk about this and a pyrase. Now a pyrase is also used for breaking down or removing the excess nucleotides. Okay. So now coming to the process that how uh, this pyro sequencing is conducted. Okay. So first of all, what do you need to do is you have a DNA strand. You, this is a DNA strand. So this is a DNA strand and you what do you need to do is you need to engineer this DNA strand. How do you engineer a DNA strand? You just have to you just have to add a new small strand in front just in front of this uh, strand. You just need to add a small strand that would be complementary to the primer that you would be using. We said that we, we have to use a primer over here. So this the strand that you would add to the a DNA template should be complementary to the primer that you are using. Okay, so when the primer, when you use this uh, thing, the primer would go and attach to to this segment. Okay, now you need you know that DNA polymerase cannot initiate the polymerization reaction by itself. Therefore, we are using the primer over here. So after attachment of the primer, what do you do is suppose the the, the the nucleotides that are present in, in the DNA strands are these A, G, C, T, A, T, T, T. Okay. Now, when you add in pyro sequencing, this suppose these are the nucleotides that you have to add. So, these all nucleotides will not be added at the same time. Remember this that each of these nucleotides would be added separately. Say first of all, this D, D ATP alpha S is added. And if the complementary, if this D ATP alpha S would be complementary to this base pair that is present in the DNA template, 
it would be added otherwise it would not be added and dna a pyrase would be used in order to flush out this the first d atp alpha alpha s okay say it is say this d atp alpha s would has not been utilized over here and a, a pyrase was used to flush out this next what will be added is d ttp thymine triphosphate would be added over here so t as soon as t would be attached over here pyrophosphate would be removed we have already discussed that over here as soon as d ttp would be attached over here pyrophosphate would be removed now as pyrophosphate is removed what will happen let, let us let us understand this with the help of these reactions this is a growing chain see this is a growing chain dnmp i said that the uh, nucleotides or nucleotides that are attached to the growing chain are in the form are in the form of monophosphates so dnmp and it has this number of nucleotides that are attached this this number of bases that are attached okay suppose this is a growing chain and it has, it already has five bases now when you add the next nucleotide dntp what will happen is dna polymerase will work on this and after dna polymerase works on this the d nmp would be increased by 1 okay so this nucleotide has also been attached to this growing chain and pyrophosphate has been removed so we are at this stage pyrophosphate has been removed got my point now this pyrophosphate would again be taken up by this aps we had said that we had talked about this aps over here and said that APS means adenosine phosphosulfase. What does this do? APS adds up to the PPI. When APS and PPI are mixed, are reacted with in the presence of ATP sulfurylase that we had talked about here, what will happen? This APS will convert into ATP. This APS would convert into ATP. When will it convert into ATP? In the presence of APS and in, in, uh, when the APS and pyrophosphates are reacted together in the presence of sulfurylase, ATP sulfurylase, then what will happen? This ATP would form and sulfate would be formed. Now, this ATP is again utilized in the third reaction and we have already talked about this luciferin. ATP plus luciferin plus O2 in the presence of luciferase enzyme breaks into AMP plus pyrophosphate plus oxyluciferin and light. The thing that we are concerned over here is light. So whenever this light is formed, we come to know that a new nucleotide has been attached to the growing chain. Let us, let us consider this once again. Firstly, the uh, DNTP was added into the growing chain and what has what, what happened is this pyrophosphate was removed. After this pyrophosphate has been removed, pyrophosphate is taken up in another reaction in the presence of APS and sulfurylase. What will it give? It will give ATP. Now this ATP again is utilized in the third reaction. There are three reactions in this process. It will take it will be taken up by the third reaction ATP. In the presence of luciferin, luciferin is the substrate of luciferase. Remember, luciferase is also found in the uh, fireflies, as you know, that ATP and luciferin and oxygen would be in the part of another reaction in the presence of luciferase. What will it give? It will give oxyluciferin, AMP, pyrophosphate, and light. So we are concerned over here about light only. Why? Because as soon as light would be given off, we would have detectors that would detect light. And then we can say that a new nucleotide has been attached. Okay. So now one another question uh, that I said you would come to know in the upcoming portion is that why are we using uh, alpha thio DATP in place of the normal, the normal ATP? Why are we using this in, in, in place of the normal ATP and we are using all the other nucleotides as the same but only ATP is used as different. Why are we using this? Because ATP is the substrate of this reaction also and ATP would be the substrate of 
the polymerase reaction also okay so if you use atp here also and atp here also then you would get there are chances that you would get false results that is why a different type of a different derivative of atp is used which is also called as alpha thio datp now the important property of alpha thio datp is that it is not a substrate or it does not take part in the reaction of this luciferin reaction it cannot be taken up by this luciferase it is not identified as a substrate or luciferase but this alpha thio datp can be easily used as a substrate for polymerase reaction it can add up in the growing chain got my point okay so this is why the uh, normal datp is not used now if you have understood this complete reaction now we can proceed to, to the next portion of the lecture so after da dttp is added next dgtp would, would be added so you we would see that the next nucleotide that should be added is c because guanine would be complementary to cytosine adenine was complementary to thymine thymine was added next base should be cytosine but the next is dgtp again it is not added then a pyrase would be used in order to flush it out next dctp is added right now this again is the nucleotide that we are interested in again the same thing would be followed again the same process would be followed and after that a pyrase would be used to flush the excess dctp out, out. similarly was the case when t was added over here excess t was flushed out by a pyrase and the next cycle similarly continues finally what do we get is we get a graph in the y axis what do we have is light intensity and on the x axis we have the bases that are being attached now let us analyze this when you use this uh, uh, fragment as a template the first base that would be attached is thymine so see that a c g does do not show any peak as soon as you come across t you see a peak okay then again a c do not show a peak and the next would be c cytosine again you see a peak so similarly this thing continues and suppose you reach at this position how will you differentiate that a single t a single uh, thing is added suppose uh, let us understand this in a better way this they, there are three t's over here right so if there are three t's the complementary base that would be attached over here would be a a a a so now how would you say that a single a has been added or three a's have been added now this is a very important question when a single nucleotide is being attached you get a peak up to the length over here the light intensity would be up to here but when three a's would be added the light intensity would be much more higher maybe three times higher than the single base was added okay so you can easily resolve that when a single base is added and when three or four bases at a time are being added okay so i guess you would have understood this uh, pyro sequencing method of sequencing if you like my lecture if you if you just like my lecture just cl click on the like button and subscribe to my channel if you have any queries post them in the comment box and i would be happy to resolve them in the upcoming lectures thank you and have a great day